Hello there everyone and welcome back to Tia you Know The Last Days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Goldwater Lover. Right now, we need to talk about international trade. For the past 70 years, um, the American economy grew by leaps and bounds. We did so by embracing in ideas and technology that older powers, content with their empires and wealth. Ignored or disdained, but we were never daunted by distance or space, by lack of expertise or technical know-how. We forged our way across the continent, united Pacific and Atlantic with ribbons of steel filled a land with settlers with the masses driven from their homelands. We embraced electricity, the assembly line, the telephone, automobile, the radio, airplane, and most recently, the TV. Most of these inventions were developed or created or refined and perfected here within the U.S., but to achieve these great feats to the point where we've made more steel than both the Germans and the Japanese combined, and built an economy and nation far richer than any in the world has seen before, we isolated ourselves. Tariffs were high and trade limited. We shunned the outside world, and in turn, they shunned us. We contended ourselves with making our cars, washing machines, TVs, and selling them to ourselves. Sure, there would be some exported to Canada, maybe to Mexico, but never in huge numbers and only limited ways. But tariffs and trade barriers... Our mark of one of two kinds of econo economies, a young struggling one seeking to carve out their place in the world in the face of international competition, or it's a sign of a degenerate and fearful people, corrupt leaders and greedy businessmen, who content themselves to grow fat off of people that are hostage to an economy of overpriced and underperforming goods, monopolies that seek only to further their own wealth and power by sucking it from their nation, instead of challenging the world, seeking new markets, offering good quality and service for a fair price. So. We are no longer a weak and struggling country, so that excuse is, has no holding, but we, are we a nation of cartels and monopolies? Are we willing to just lounge in lays and decadence, letting our standards slip and prices rise? I say no. America can compete with anyone in the world. If someone can do something better, we should learn from it. We should be willing to embrace trade with the whole world, with no limits or restrictions. Now is the time for America to embrace free trade, I. But we're gonna... So I asked you guys yesterday whether we should do Goldwater's Way... This is the party line, and overall there's more support for Gold Waters Way. So if you're only about the party line, please go right ahead, but it is what it is, but Gold Waters Way. Trading with the enemies of freedom and democracy alone should give us pause to those seeking free trade, as they like to call it, but because it's not free trade. It is a bloody, demeaning trade. America, as one of the few homes of freedom and democracy in this world, uh, should not allow our hands to be dirty by the gold and silver from blood-soaked hands of the tyrants. Opinion polls have long shown that a substantial majority opposing or oppose trading with the German Reich, Italy, Iberia, or even the Empire of Japan. However, the leaders of the RD party, blindsided by the president's announcements, are horrified, embargoing the largest markets in the world for the being brut Brutal dictatorships could cause a lot of economic chaos, since the members of the OFN are a lot smaller economically, so can't really afford to buy all of America's goods. Even if it is popular, this new free trade policy is a dicey political and economic gamble. The OFN grows further divided, and American democracy has no need to trade with the fascists of the world, even though we did force Japan to open up trade with us again, so... It's kind of strange, but... Even though we have the OFN grow more divided, we get them more unified, so... The various nations of the OFN are meeting in Vancouver, Canada, in the first economy summit. However, the first question raised is if an economy summit is even needed. While Goldwater's efforts to encourage trade between OFN members has been well received, should more effort go towards making the Organization of Free Nations a trading bloc, even a full-on economic union, or would it be best to remain as a military alliance? Oh, I guess we're voting here too. Oh, hopefully we do okay. Uh, can we suppress uh, the other parties here? I hope we can. Uh, and the RDs are ready for anything. The American Society United and the RPP, or NPP, RPP, NPP is working together well, which is unfortunate, but whatever. Oh boy, gold waters away, my friends. <clears throat> so America, I ask you, do you want to trade with the people that use slavery and torture? Do you want to become the nation that sells to the butchers of men? Are you willing to spend money on products made in prison camps? I think the answer is quite clear. Unfortunately, mu like much of American politics, the answer is never so black and white. While embargoes with the German Reich, the Italian Empire, and the Empire of Japan have been put in place since the end of the war, they've steadily loosened and opened up in time. American TV travels across the ocean for German beer, Japanese cars, or Italian wine, after all. With two-thirds of the world and nearly half of the population of the globe under their, their sway, totally cutting off links with the fascist and ultra-nationalist powers of the world would be like cutting off your arm. At least many of the big businessmen, many of them are on the more right-wing of the RDs, are off to say such. But there's always been an uneasiness, a disgust, with trading with such nations. Such goods are not readily available, usually for the simple reason that no one wants them. To drive a Mercedes is to mark you out as a German sympathizer, maybe even a supporter of Yaki's madness. To buy a Mitsubishi car shows that the thousands that died in the Pacific were in vain to value foreignness and efficiency over patriotism and love of country. Goldwater, as a valiant anti-fascist he is, tapped into the sentiment in a big way to him. Free trade means more than low tariffs and few restrictions. It means trading with democracies, with nations that value freedom and liberty over totalitarianism and iron-fisted rule. 
Many of the leading Democrats, the businessmen serving their nation in the Congress for a period before returning back to their family business or the big corporations, are horrified at this Goldwater way. Some have even come out and said so, but the public reaction is overwhelmingly in favor of Goldwater's idea of free trade. It's even seen as a courageous act by an otherwise loyal Democrat to stand up to the wealthy elites, to stand up for what he thinks, what he knows, is right. The Goldwater way or the highway? We get some rifles and the Arties look a little better? Great. Goods from just partners. That's not bad. We build cities faster. OFN nations will no longer be allowed to trade with ultra nationalist, fascist, or national socialist, Burgundian systemite nations. All right. Well, it is what it is. Um, I'm a little worried about this one though. The Goldwater Way. So, appeal to these guys to complete this successfully. Return to the gold standard and secure civil rights act before it completes. So, we got 189 days. Um, let's wait to do these two. We're gonna beeline through all of these as best as fast as we possibly can. Now these guys are 28 and mostly 21 day focuses, which is not bad, but tear free OFM. The Free Trade Act of 1970 has worked its way through Congress for the past few months. The capital switchboard has been overloaded with calls from constituents to express their opinions on the bill, and unofficial tallies by operators show that those who are opposed to it are outnumbered by an outstanding 20 to 1. And any economist or business leader who dared to publicly state that banning trade with the largest nations on earth could be detrimental to the American economy have been announced as fearmongers and Nazi sympathizers. But the bill has, of course, passed the House in large numbers and with a healthy majority in the Senate, though some notable RDs voted against it. Most of them won't be seeing re-election next time. Goldwater, sure, but in a ceremony in the Oval Office recorded on camera, the Free Trade Act is signed, and it's official. Though the results will take time to be felt, as there have been a great period over of a year for most industries, Goldwater's approval skyrocketed, and Americans everywhere are proud of their moral stance. Alright, so we want the Democrats here. We want the D's to win. Um, Deep South, maybe? New England is... Oh, God. Uh, let's do Deep South first. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll try to crack into New England, maybe? Because honestly, like, we're doing really well with the debt. Like, after this, we're just going to kill that GDP. And by kill it, I mean blowing it up. Oh, the comments included, though. Someone said... Uh, okay, so I was mistaken. Apparently... Uh, apparently, this side is more conservative, because it does say conservative finance as well, so... Maybe I should have went with the left side if I really want to go more conservative, but... Oh, well. It is what it is. Uh, my apologies. I just... Whenever I... Sometimes when I do my campaign runs, especially for TNO, I'm like... Especially for American presidents, I'm just like... This sounds right. Just this sounds right. And I'll, I'm going to play Goldwater at least one more time, if not two more times in the future, so... The Offense Economy Summit... Uh, we sent invitations to all the members of the OFN to meet in Vancouver, Canada, for the first ever OFN Economy Summit. President Goldwater himself will travel to the Great White North to meet with officials, ministers, and business leaders of America's allies, after all. This whole thing is his idea, a way to try to bring the alliance closer together. Officially, it's been stated that the goal of the summit is to encourage more trade between the members of the OFN and a spirit of freedom and democracy, while still maintaining their strength and will to stand up to the fascists and imperialists, of course, in Eurasia. However, the U.S. President has not been quiet about his desire to forego free trade deals and open more markets, which uh, some of the smaller nations are hesitant, if not downright hostile to, after all. Nations like Australia and South Africa, with smaller economies and businesses, will have to face off American behemoths like Ford, Standard Oil, and Boeing, with vast resources, skills, and labor. The U.S. conglomerates could quickly monopolize these new markets, undercutting their competition and driving the smaller local companies out of the business altogether. But at the same time, the thought of Australian holding cars or a Canadian Avro planes being sold into one of the largest markets in the world will little in the way of tariffs also deeply appealing. But once we are all together, with the diplomatic niceties of being greeted by an honor guard of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and a delicious dinner of wild-caught salmon in the bellies, the real work of international affairs can begin, and maybe Goldwater's charisma and forceful speeches might just be enough or be able to convince OFN and unite closer together. Can I get a picture of the Mountie? Of course you can. Ensuring a strong dollar. The American dollar has long been one of the most important currencies in the world, rivaled only by the German Reichsmark and the Japanese yen as the world's reserve currency. However, it's been left to flow free for a while now, which causes rapid rises and falls depending on the markets and politics. This has caused uncertainty and economic issues for years now, but President Goldwater wants to stabilize the system. A whole suite of executive orders and laws have been proposed to keep the dollar stable. The goal should be able to get the value of the dollar compared to the Reichsmark and the yen, as well as the open currencies that should be perfect for businesses who want a lower dollar to encourage exports and for, for companies that want a stronger to make importing from other countries less expensive. While we can't please both sides at once, we can at least keep them in balance and ensure prosperity for all. Strengthening the dollar decisions. I'm going to screw that up. So here we go. Oh, huh, huh, look at that. <laughs> RDs love us. Everyone wants the tariff free OFN. Holy crap. So we, yeah, they're ready for anything. So, holy crap. Why do we have so much support? This is an extremely bipartisan thing here. So, how many guys is that? 25? That's 48. Wait. What? Right? There's 25. 25 plus... It's 48 plus 48. We don't... All we have is... 
four senators not voting, right? 29, uh, 31. 31, yeah? Wait. Wait, wait a second. So, 3, 1. That's 44. How do we have this many senators? Wait, what? I, I must be doing my math wrong, because 21 plus 23 is 44, right? 44 plus 48. I'm doing my math wrong. 44. Oh, and then we have 8 as well? 44 plus 48. That's 92. That's 100. Yeah, what am I thinking? Uh, my apologies. When I'm recording this, I just it's so not late at night. But okay, you know what? We're going to go with it. We're going to go with it. The topic of the summer. The handshake are over. Handshakes are over. And the press is taking out their pictures. Now, as the doors close and the ministers and secretaries take their places around the table, small flags mark each delegation. The biggest moment of the OFN economy summit has arrived. For weeks in Washington, President Goldwater has been discussing with advisors, cabinet members, and congresspeople about the best course of action in regards to the OFM. There are three plans for, as far as Goldwater can tell. The first and most simple is to keep the OFN as a simple military alliance, focused on external fascist threat from Europe, Asia, and Africa. The Joint Chiefs of Staff and the more hawkish advisors are in favor of this course of action. To keep America and her allies focused on the true threat, another group, led by Secretary of State and those seeking to push diplomacy, seek to the OFM as a force to encourage free trade around the world, especially with nations that may not be the most democratic or open, but are still important geopolitical partners to the US. By convincing these nations to open their economies to the OF OFM, they'll be tied even more directly to America and those levers can be used in the future. The final group, promoted by the Secretary of Commerce and business leaders, seeks to make the OFN more than a military alliance, and even more than just a push for free trade around the world, but as an establishment of an entire economic bloc, reducing tariffs, cutting regulations, establishing common standards, all to push for more economic ties between the various nations, making everyone richer in the process. The decision has been made, and now it's time for Goldwater to make the announcement. I've gathered you here today to discuss how to make the strongest military in the Force in the world, all work together to unite our economies. Um, I'll be honest here. This sounds like a this won't go very well, cause the other OFN members probably won't like it. But if they if we're united, they might go with it. So let's let's try to unite our economies together, cause we can. And can I suppress the NPP? I just want to suppress political opponents, man. I just want to be like a normal politician. I want to suppress other people's opinions and votes and stuff like that. But we do want a strong dollar here, so. I don't know what that's going to be like, but a good RD, good, good, a good RD campaign. We love it. And keep it on here. <coughs> Let the summit commence. The OFN, or the Organization Free Nations of County Senate, has begun. Delegations for the free nations of the world have arrived in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, to meet with the American Bar President Barry Goldwater to lay out the future of the anti-fascist alliance. Negotiations over trade, economic barriers, military programs, and much more will take place over the week as diplomats, political leaders, businessmen, and generals all meet. While reporters and newsmen are all over the city to cover the summit, the action negotiations are being done behind closed doors, and only the ministers and heads of state who enter the conferences, uh, conference rooms of the Chateauesque Hotel of Vancouver are, every day are privy to the details. Speculation is rampant that President Goldwater is pushing for an economic union, while others believe that a stronger alliance is the main goal of the summit. By the end of the summit, the OFM will be changed one way or another. Nice to be here in Canada. Must be pretty cool in April. Must be pretty nice. Well, then again, I don't know. I've, I've only been in Canada once, and it was definitely not that part of Canada. Oh. Just before the, any crisis hits, please let us cut down the debt. We pursue an economic union. The first news of the OFN summit, economy summit, has been released to the public today in a press statement made by President Goldwater, where he un officially unveiled his grand plans, uniting the members of the OFN into a grand economic union. The details that were re released uh, were released state that this new organization of free nations, while not neglecting the defensive alliance, would also reduce tariffs and regulatory barriers between the various nations and prioritize trade between OFN members. Goldwater also stated that the new OFN will send economic aid to support nations suffering through re recession or crisis. As we saw after 1929, economic chaos, depression, and tariffs will only lead to the rise of authoritarian tyrants, Goldwater said during his statement. Therefore, it's vital that the OFN, of course, <clears throat> seek uh, to strengthen all members, not just simply through military means, but by increasing economic and social ties between all of us. Public response has been mixed so far. In some countries, smaller businesses are afraid of being undermined or even ebbed out by larger American companies, while labor unions in the U.S. are raising concerns that good-paying manufacturing jobs will be sent overseas to areas with lower costs. Some countries have also anonymously expressed concern that America will have way too much power, being the largest economy in the OFM, and could be using these smaller nations in a neo-imperialist setup, but closer ties within the alliance and strengthening everyone's economies in turn may in turn make the whole stronger, but it will have to be approved by the rest of the OFM before it can go into effect. Economics? I thought this was a military alliance. God, I hope we can get it done. Please let us get it done. Time to touch the New England area, maybe? We'll see. Come on, let's get it done, please. Why would Bulgaria not want to be with us? The tariffs reform passes. 
In the latest victory for President Goldwater's diplomatic and trade efforts, the Foreign Trade Act of 1970 has just passed Congress, despite a last-ditch attempt to fill a buster from an NPP senator that stretched late into the night, calling the bill a disaster in the making for the hard-working American. Yaki supporters denounced it as a return of the failed interventionist politics of the past. However, the bill passed with the majority of support from the RDs and more moderate members of the MPP, as was fairly non-controversial in the halls of power outside Washington, though. Some commentators have expressed reservations about the financial cost of removing tariffs, and some have talked about the major impact on good-paying American jobs in comparison to cheaper labor elsewhere in the world OFM. There are also concerns over the unilateral action that is not being reciprocated by other OFM members immediately. All over, all the opinion on the bill seems a net positive for the U.S. Well, with the bill now on its way to be signed by the president, soon the vast majority of the tariffs will be erased in the law books, allowing products from all over the OFN to be sold in America without the artificial price increase by taxing imports. This will be a victory for everyone. The price of raw materials, oil, consumer goods, and more from nations like Canada, Australia, and South Africa will be cheaper for U.S. companies and consumers while giving an economic boost to America's friends and allies. Here's your free OFN. Nice. Nice. North American Tra Free Trade Union. Fixed exchange rates. Requires all the following, so we can do this one next. The North American Trade co uh, uh, Cooperation. The final step to weaning the American economy off the fascists is bring North America closer together. Canada has been in lockstep with their economy ever since the collapse of the British Empire. Mexico, while well, not part of the OFM, has always been a major trade partner. But now, it's a time to reduce all the trade barriers between our nations, implement standardizations in our economies, and bring everyone together in peace and prosperity. It's time to negotiate the North American Trade Cooperation Agreement, NACTSI. NATSI, huh? We'll provide millions of dollars to help build up industries in both countries to the same standards as ours and free interest loans, or interest free loans. And in turn, we will make it easier for them to sell their resources, such as oil, food, iron ore, aluminum, and more to America. It's a win, win, win. The reform passed. Success. The o proposal to reform the OFN has been approved by other OFN members. That's a huge diplomatic victory for more domestically minded President Barry Goldwater. He's been using his charisma and sweeping everyone up into his grand sweeping plan. This major reform promises great things in the future for the U.S., the Organization of Free Nations, and the world at large. Nice. OFN-centric economy. Look at that. Nice. I love Barry Goldwater, what he's doing. For now. Oh, come on, baby. We're less than 20 billion. 20 Bs. Nice. Get some extraction. Awesome. Get some more fuel, even though I don't... Yep, some more comments. Someone says, Reaganomics is the radical free market path. We might have should have chosen that path, but it's okay. Maybe we should have chosen that one, but... Yeah, I'll be popular among Southern Democrats. That's definitely more conservative. My bad. That's, I need to read things before I actually click on them. So, which means the next campaign to do is Barry Goldwater. I'm probably going to screw that up a little bit as well, but we'll see. I just want to set us up so we can do okay for now. Keep spending for now. That's fine. Cut. All right, so if that's really that much, pulls are up That's fine. Um, we only have 111 days. So, after that one, uh, we're going to do this one and then do the gold standard and... That should be good for us, right? Because then we're going to just stabilize the economy as fast as possible after that. Nice. Nice. Goes a little more unified. Where are we at? Spying on the treaty ports. Nice. All right. Italy is in the OFN as well. Tariffs are abolished. OFN centric economy. God, number go up. Please. Please, please, please. Stimulating the economy. Ooh, I like the stimulation. Oh, less than 16 billion. Oh, actually, what do we have here? So, stabilize the dollar. The economy will grow. Issue bonds. Production gas. Anyway, economy will grow. Prop of the dollar. Okay. The gold standard. For years, the United States has been drifting away from the gold standard. During the, I think you read this one, though. But I'm going to read it again because this is important. During the Great Depression, citizens were forbidden from exchanging the paper currency for bullion. And for a while, there was talk of going away from the gold entirely to replace with nothing. Goldwater is reversing this trend and is going to get the U.S. back on the gold standard and allow people to exchange their bills for hard currency. Laws are already working their way through Congress to make this happen. And the Treasury Department and the Federal Reserve are already preparing for what will need to be done. To build up America's gold reserves and to create mechanisms to stabilize prices. If either effort fails, it could cripple the U.S. economy for a long, long time. But that's a risk we're worth taking. Well worth taking. Uh, a lot of safe RD stuff. Deep South might be important. Um, East Coast. Yeah, let's go with East Coast. Or, uh, let's go. Central East Coast. There you go. Nice. I just want to get it done, man. Poverty. It's still getting better. It ain't too shabby yet. It ain't too shabby if I do say so myself. But yeah, I'm glad we got... I didn't realize Italy got so much, like, when I started the last episode. So much. I would have loved to have Serbia and Hungary and France and... Pretty much everyone in the OFM, but, you know, whatever. I don't know. Let me go get Vietnam in here, too, but I kind of really doubt it, you know. And, of course, Guyana's in here, too, because we I actually made sure that they stayed with us. And instead of being rebellious little stink bags. 
Eh, we don't need to do that one. Central Siberian Republic. The North American Trade Cooperation. To pre today, President Barry Goldwater announced that he has been in uh, contact with the governments of Canada and Mexico in regards to the proposed North American Free or North American Trade Cooperation Treaty, inviting America's neighbors to meet in D.C. to negotiate. Free trade among the three largest economies of North America has long been a goal, a dream for those seeking to bring the U.S., Canada, and Mexico closer together. However, concerns regarding the removal of tariffs, the dismantling of import quotas, the harmonization of regulations, and the extension of copyright protections need to be addressed in the NATC negotiations. Labor unions in Canada and the U.S. are afraid that big businesses will seek to lower costs by building factories in the cheaper and less unionized Mexico, while farmers in Canada and Mexico are afraid of being overwhelmed by American food without the import quotas they currently have, or Hollywood and American TV networks destroying their, her neighbors' cultural institutions. And of course, nationalist forces in all three countries are reluctant. If not downright hostile, to the idea of making all three countries more open, facilitating immigration, culture, and trade, Mexicans especially believe that the NATC is just a way to get their nation to join the American-led organization Free Nations Alliance, which would end their decades of neutrality. All these problems, and many more, will have to be overcome if NATC is to be put into place, but Barry Goldwater isn't daunted, and in fact seems to be relishing the chance to make the biggest effort yet to reshape the global economy. Time to bring together the three amigos. So. The RDs, we, you gotta love them. You gotta love them. And the far right and the center don't give a crap about us, but we don't give a crap about them either. Build up gold reserve. Stimulating the markets. Has passed. Build up the gold reserves. While America already has a sizable reserve of gold hidden away in the vaults of Fort Knox, it will not be nearly enough to cut back the entire value of gold currently in the circulation of the U.S. Government buyers are already working on buying up all the gold they can from every mine in the U.S. To uh, prepare for uh, to prepare to mint them into new coins, including a new 10 and $20. It ain't cheap, as the price is skyrocketing with rapid buying, but it'll be worth it. Once we have enough gold ready to be exchanged, people will know that the dollar will be stable and secure. Prosperity will come. The birth of the free trade in North America. It's official. The North American Free... I keep saying Free Trade Agreement. The North American Trade Cooperation Treaty has been passed, with Barry Goldwater signing the document in the Oval Office in a TV ceremony. After passing Congress, the Canadian Parliament approving the enabling legislation, the Governor General granting royal assent, and the Mexican Senate approving the treaty and ordering it published in the Diario Oficial de la Federación. The NATC is now to be put into effect. Well, each nation has carved out a few compromises, and general tariffs are to be reduced to zero on the vast majority of products and resources, and regulations that would stifle investment by international companies are to be removed. Already, some of America's biggest corporations are announcing they are planning on investing millions in Canada and Mexico in factories. While approvals from oil pipelines from Alberta and, Mex and uh, Veracruz are being sought to ship millions of barrels of crude oil to satisfy American demand, however. Purchased by Mexican and indigenous groups that have been who have had constitutional protections on their land removed. Canadian farmers who are nervous of having the markets flooded with cheaper goods, and unionized American workers afraid for the jobs have erupted across the continent. But President Goldwater can be proud of what he's accomplished. He's made trade between the three major nations of North America open and free, and brought the U.S., Mexico, and Canada closer together. With North America working together to strengthen their economies and ties, there is nothing, to nothing that can stop the USA now. A victory for free trade, my friends. A victory indeed. Beautiful. We don't have that many days left, but as long as we get the uh, thing passed, right? Oh, great. Operation success. They run into a terrible campaign. That's good as well. So as long as we get that one done, we should do well. Grant us bonuses. We should get a big old bonus. I want a fat bonus, man. Nothing here yet? Well, let's wait. Cool. Foreign capital. Subsidizing your companies will have some effect on countering economic collapse, but for more lasting support, we should look into foreign capital. Neutral nations in Europe like Sweden and Switzerland are beginning to invest in our companies, so it's time to give them the go ahead. Let the foreign money flow and get our economy back on track. Welcome, financial ambassadors. Oh, look at that. Oh, we're doing mobilizing yet? No, we're not. Volunteer only, Robert McNamara. No. Not bad. Pretty good. Oh, and campaign. How's the campaigns going? Can we get New England or the East Coast? That'd be so good. Let's go New England. Come on, come on. We can do it. We want, we just want a stable economy. That's all we want. The gold standard has been reestablished, my friends. As the votes were counted, the outcomes became clear. President Barry Morris, Goldwater's bill to return the U.S. economy to the gold standard has passed. The administration has been working together with Wallace F. Bennett extensively, a venture which now seems to have paid off. Congress has ratified a series of bills proposed by Goldwater administration, which have strengthened American dollars' ties with a shiny metal. America will be building up its gold bullion reserve, restoring the promise that every dollar can be exchanged for gold this way. We can't enter dependence on the much more unstable silver, that second-rate inferior metal. In doing so, the 
ever increasing trend towards inflation will be stopped dead in its tracks and prices will be stabilized. Secretary Don Reagan has laid the groundworks by coordinating with the Treasury Department and the Federal Reserve, making sure that our country is to be ready to be returned to a prosperity at home. This move has been welcomed by many in the financial markets, of course. The passing of the bill is no major surprise to the Goldwater administration or most political observers, but nevertheless, it is a clear indicator that the Goldwater administration can rally the support it needs. It's likely that the President and Bennett will continue to work together on similar topics in the future, putting the gold back in Goldwater, right? Absolutely. Beautiful, my friends. And then, uh, actually, since we're here, since they said we could do this stuff, so, oh my goodness, oh, more savings. This is going to be helpful when the oil crisis hits. Why do we need oil? Just invest in nuclear, especially in 1970. I wonder if they're gonna, if Tino you know, Dads are ever gonna add in something like the three mile, three mile, was it three mile wide, or three mile what, island disaster, on Staten Island, I think it was something like that. I could be wrong about that, but it'd be kind of cool if they did. You know, something parallel to what happened in real life, in real life, you know. They're probably already thinking about, it. oh, I had to say something, but oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. Um, I hope we can get through this one first. No. No. Oh, crud. Oh, look at the GDP. And look at the growth. No. Why? Oh, wait. Is this not done yet? Um, I'll be honest here. Like, if we have to, I will use console commands to rush things through. So, like, we, we passed the gold standard. We passed the gold act. So, technically, we've got this one done. So, this doesn't make any sense. Successfully return to the gold center, which we literally just did, did we not? I don't have to use cons commands for this, so. Because there's, there, you're forced to choose one of those ways, and you're forced to do that stuff earlier as soon as you start, so. <sighs> so if I have to use cons commands, so be it. If you want to read about this, please go right ahead. Honestly, if you want to read about all these, please go right ahead. It's just. I will use cons commands if I have to. So there you go. If you want to do that, as well as the Federal Energy Reserve Office, everything's bigger in Texas. Enforced rationing, uh, the synthetic alternative, as well as a disaster averted. That's just weird, anyways. Well, I'll go back and do this one as well. But price stabilization mechanics or mechanisms. The Department of Commerce has already begun organizing the Price Stabilization Committee, which will be given the power to set price ceilings and floors on what they have determined to be the basic essentials for the public. Food, water, gasoline, apartment rents, electricity, natural gas, and more. The object of the PSC is to find the best balance between profit for the companies that sell these products and ensure that there will be a good supply at an affordable price for the average American. Inflation will be kept low, everyone will be fed, and there should be more than enough left over in the pockets of the U.S. citizens to spend on luxury items like TVs, cars, and vacations. And then, securing sufficient silver. The gold standard just doesn't mean that the U.S. dollar is backed in gold, but silver as well. We already use silver to make coins ranging from nickel to the half dollar, but soon silver will be available to the general public as well as bullion. We will have to build up a reserve of silver to prepare for the date of exchange, just as we do with gold. Buying everything that the vines are producing and getting it struck into new silver dollars and lesser value coins. So, I do apologize, like I hope I don't have to, but obviously we'll know in just a little bit. A late night at the State Department, Jim was rushing to edit together the last of the dossier. He had already spent a lot of long nights on this briefing. T tight deadlines were unfortunately a hallmark of a State Department career at least. This time it wasn't just plain old new newspaper or paperwork. A Russian warlord named Pavel Batov wanted to play or pay a diplomatic visit to the U.S., and Jim had to organize a briefing for the people who were going to meet him. They say he's organized a competent fighting force, cracked down on the corruption, and in fact has reunited half of Russia. All things considered, even if he was the head of a military junta, he did not seem like a terrible American ally, reliable, hated the Reich, and not terribly tyrannical. Jim enclosed a clear black and white photo of Batov as a funnel touch, and he slid all the documents into a yellow folder. He was going to drop it off at his superior's desk. When his superior opened up the dossier, he picked up the black and white photo of Batov and was intently looking it over. Hmm, he reminds me of someone, said his superior. Who? Jim asked. His superior paused for a moment. He reminds me of an old Russian general, Suvorov. What was so special about Suvorov? Jim forgot that his superior had a background in Russian culture and history. For starters, Suvorov never lost a battle. And I didn't, I didn't even realize that these guys actually won. Uh, okay, this is going to be... Are they fighting each other already? No, they're not. No. These guys are fighting over here, so... Yeah, I, I, mm, I'm going to assume that Batov, the Russians, Russian People's Union, is going to win. Also, we had the elections. I've been doing a lot of the focus over here, like, because I've done these before, and they're they're okay. We won't about that again. Please go ahead, as well as disaster averted. It, it is what it is, but we had the elections. We actually gained 10 more senators for the Democratic Party. The center lost 13, the Republicans got 4, and the far right lost 1. So, 
I didn't use any console commands for this Senate election, like, zero console commands for this one for 1970s Senate. So, like, that's really awesome. Also, like, we didn't get any event down here. Like, when I was reading this, like, it's, it's, for example, but this one says fight fascism. Um, the meeting the demands of this mission will grant us bonuses failing will hurt us. The mission's demands are currently not being met. So with the Copperhead strategy, it said that the demands were being met. So even though it didn't give us any sort of event, it didn't give us anything like that at all, it, it, it was apparently very good. Uh, let's keep that open just in case, you know, just in case of the future. But yeah, I mean, look at that. We got 10 more senators. We don't need the Republicans now. We don't need the center. We don't need the right or far right. We don't need anyone else, just the Democrats, probably. So I'm, I'm feeling... I'm feeling pretty good now. I'm feeling pretty good. But Atis victory in Iraq. All right, so be it. And the Ardies are united, pretty much. America's united, and the MPPs, well, they're doing okay. Enforce rationing. Uh, do we want to help out these guys? Russian People's Union. Uh, I can give them all the stuff. Here. Money is not really a concern right now of ours. So, sure. There you go. You can have some stuff. We don't really care. I'll be honest. I don't. So, and let's go disaster averted. So, no consequences were used at all, so... Um, Bolotov had made it to D.C. He did the customary diplomatic song and dance, giving presents, saying the magic words that begged from the leaders of the country. He was a soldier, no more, no less, and he did not feel <clears throat> suited for this sort of, sort of work. He felt that he was wasting his time here, yes. The work here was important, but he wished only that someone else could have it done. It was all very exhausting until the men from Washington brought him to Arlington. A tour guide led Bolotov and the entourage throughout the cemetery. Bolotov was as solemn as he could be, as they were essentially passing through hollow ground. Some graves were as old as the Civil War, and others were as recent as South African War. He marveled at how clean the graves were, and the effort put into maintaining the grounds. It was mostly uneventful, save for his translator telling him the comments from the tour guide about the history and background of the cemetery. For the final trip of the way, they had arrived at the tomb of the unknown soldier. The tour guide had explained how the monument was in remembrance of a a soldier whose remains could not be identified, but will be remembered nonetheless. The guy had time for the explanation as well since when he had finished. It had been time for the changing of the guard. The entire entourage watched with beta breath as the sentinel did each and every step of the routine with pinpoint accuracy, precision, and timing. When it was all done, Bodtov had sent something to his translator, asked for a bathroom, and promptly left with his guards. Well, what did the high marshal say to you? The Americans asked the translator, curious of what he had prom prompted such a sudden departure out of the total silence during the tour. The high marshal is very grateful that you have had the generosity to show him Arlington Cemetery, the translator replied. He had excused himself to be alone for a few moments. He will be back shortly. What did he think of Arlington? He was deeply moved and told me he wished the people of Russia could do the same. A soldier does not weep, he sobs. Nice. Good, good, good relations. We like good relations with pretty much as many people as we can get. Um, that being said, ooh, issue bonds. Well, we're done with that for now. And I did run off screen like to grab some more coffee, so... But then we're going to be building up the gold reserves again, so if you want to reread this one again, please go right ahead, but... Ooh, actually, that's really bad. Ooh, ooh, actually, that's really bad. We weren't supposed to take that focus and then not be able to stabilize the economy. Ooh, oh, that's so bad with the oil crisis. Oh, I completely forgot about that. You know, if things go poorly, I'm going to just go off screen and just focus auto-complete them, because that's BS to us. Like, come on, man. I think it should really be more focused on... Ooh, as results are in, if you wonder about that, let's go ahead and update it, whatever. Um, just... You should be able to continue to focus this, but if you don't address the situation going on in the world, then you should get some extremely severe penalties. I don't know, maybe this should be like a, I don't know, of a media popularity contest or anything like that, but I don't know. Forcing it through focuses, I understand why the devs do it, but I don't know. Maybe there's a way to improve it, maybe I'm wrong. You know, I'm not 100% perfect and right on everything, but what I am right on is cutting down that debt, and I did slower civilian construction spending again, as well as not boost up civilian spending, just because we're doing quite well, I'll be honest, with our uh, PP right now, so I'm not actually really worried about this at this at the moment. Things might get really bad later on, but you never know. And also we have the United Arab States, which really sucks, so. Look to the Italian Peninsula. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. Italy and her oil will be safe. Yes. So now we get the other focus tree, which we got last time, I think, when I played the USA, El Duce's Disaster. The company man, or the Naples Conference. It goes further divided, but so be it. Alright, so now let's go and stabilize the economy. For the love of God, if this doesn't go well, then... A momentary embol embolism. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. This is all about the oil crisis as well. Back to normal-ish. Alright, so that means oil, oil crisis is effectively reduced. That's, oh, that's not bad. We could probably boost construction spending, but then again, we don't have that much to do. But, uh, price stabilization mechanics, or mechanisms. Nice. Uh... All right, before we do that one again, let's see, 1970, we're good on 1970 stuff. Awesome, awesome, gun stuff. Let's do some gun stuff. I can't remember if I read it or not, but 
What would you anyways again? Price Stabilization mecha Mechanisms The Department of Commerce has already begun organizing the Price Stabilization Committee, which will be given the power to set price ceilings and floors on what they've been determined to be at the basic essentials for the public. Food, water, gasoline, apartment rents, electricity, natural gas, and more. The, the object of the PSC is to find the best balance between profit for the companies that sell these products and to ensure that there will be a good supply at an affordable price. For the average American, inflation will be kept low. Everyone will be fed, and there should be more than enough left over in the pockets of the U.S. citizens to spend on luxury items like TV, cars, and vacations. Uh, all for the stabilization of the economy, my friends. Secure sufficient silver. The gold standard doesn't mean... Well, I think I read this one as well, but I'm going to read it again because we have time. The gold standard doesn't mean that the U.S. dollar is backed in gold, but silver as well. We are to use silver to make coins ranging from the nickel to the half dollar, but soon silver will also be available to the general public as well as bullion. We'll have to build up our reserves of silver to prepare for the date of exchange, just as we did with gold. Buying everything that the mines are producing, getting it struck into new silver dollars and lesser value coins. So, my apologies if you don't want me... I mean, just, it is what it is. Sometimes I forget when I read things, but a Jewish Freemason president? Probably. Oh, look at that. Liquid reserves. Oh, God, yes. Look, it's all there. It's all there. They think everyone is too dumb to notice, but if you open your eyes, you'll see it. I oh, see. Look, look, look here. See this? Right here. It's in the gosh darn newspaper. All this free trade and deregulation stuff. Yeah, that's so they can make their dirty money, shipping drugs and slaves and brainwashing all around the world without anyone noticing. How else do you think these big companies can make all that money? And it's all over the world. Don't believe you? Then tell me why. Did the Germans suddenly fall into a civil war? Why is Japan on the brink of collapse? Why the F did we go fight in Africa because it was all ruse? See, it was all trick, you know? No, you're so blind. Look, here, in the back pages. Russia's reforming, but of course no one wants to hear that. Going to take over all of Europe and Asia and make the whole communist thing a reality. Because it's a huge, huge secret. Destabilize the world, make all the empires fall. Who? The Freemasons, of course, the Jews! They put their pup in the White House already. Heck, he's Jewish. He pretends he isn't, but he still is anyway. As always, always was, always will be. He's destroying the U.S., undermining everything that makes us great. They've already crippled Germany and Japan. Now they'll be unopposed, especially since Goldwater's the president. Why? So that when the Jewish Freemasons come out and control everything, their master plan, it's all in the Bible. It's in, you know, Mein, mein Kampf. They're going to bring the end of the world so they can rule everything and make us all slaves and mindless drones, make us stupid and fat and lazy and infertile. So, I'm a patriot. I'm an American. It sounds, if it sounds like a Nazi, well, then I, that must mean Nazis are American patriots. Hitler knew it all. That's why I tried to get rid of them, but he failed. So, we need to finish the job. I'm never taking the subway again. Uh, also, like, I did want to say, like, whenever, we, like, earlier, either this episode or, like, the very first episode, like, we, Yaki was brought up, but how, like, how much influence did Yaki really have? Like, I mean, he'd be, like, really, really just not well known, I would assume. Like, obviously, we know about Yaki. We love TNO, or we know a little bit about TNO. Like, we've heard of Yaki, but, like, for in game stuff, like, would they really know of Yaki? Would they really? But fix exchange rates. To encourage those businesses that are still chaining the Unity Pact, Triumvirate, and the Co Prosperity Sphere to sever their ties. The government is proposing to fix exchange rates between the U.S. dollar, their currencies, and gold in such a way as to make it better to keep the dollars back at home and in the OFN and keep the Reichsmarks in yen out. Other bonuses include reducing inflation, keeping government spending under control, and generally making the U.S. a better place to do business with. With a strong dollar and a fixed exchange rates, America will no longer be tired of the whims of dictators across the sea, playing with their levers of control to undermine the U.S. like they have done before. Never again will the dollar be held hostage by a fascist, fascist state. If you want to read about this, please go ahead. We're going to go with the conservative option because the liberal option would be the communist option. Well done, gentlemen. Well done. Uh, anything down here? No money yet. And we're not going to help anybody out with it. Stay in the course. Uh, I've done this one three times. If you want to do that, please go ahead. I mean, actually, that's probably really bad for us to do. Because we lose some more support, but whatever. Well, that's a, that was actually a massive hit to our popularity, but whatever. I don't really care. And if it's really bad, then I'll go back and fix it up, but... Eh. How many, how many Supreme Court justices do we have? Oh, we have seven and two. Oh, I guess that's why. Yeah, that makes sense why we got such a big hit. Oh, well. A stable economy. It has been a long time coming with tough choices and setbacks, dealing with the complicated and fraught intersections of politics and economics. But Goldwater's hard work has paid off. The economy is roaring. Businesses are expanding rapidly. The GDP is growing at record rates. And everyone that wants one has a job and enough income to not only get the essentials, but all the consumer goods they ever needed. America looks forward to the future with pride and optimism, casting aside the doldrums of an old generation. We get better consumer goods. The Democrats become even more popular. Stability and production efficiency. Your attention goes up. Nice. And that Democrats become more popular will definitely help us out here, because after we took a slight hit... Wait. Hold on. If resource efficiency gain, and more stability. We were at 43% earlier, now we're 50%. You know what? I'm not going to question some of these things. We're just going to accept it, and just kind of roll with it, because... Yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. Nice. 
And also, I do love that we do have Federal Food Banks. It's, a, it's pretty good to go between RFK to Barry Goldwater, because you can still improve, like, the poverty rate here, which is uh, just awesome. Just awesome. A stable economy. Anything else here? Nope. After that, what are we going to do? Uh, the right choice. We'll probably do the right choice. Let's finish this side up first. The president's campaign on a strong anti-fascist message, and Hatton Owl is putting that into practice. And what better way to hurt the enemies of freedom than in their pocketbooks? America will place an embargo on every fascist, national, socialist, and adjoining ideological nation in the world, refusing to buy their products or sell them to ours or them. While businessmen in New York and the politicians in Washington in their pockets will complain. It's a popular idea with everyday Americans, after all. Buying products made by slave labor under oppressive regimes is tantamount to supporting them, and all red-blooded, freedom-loving U.S. citizens will never stoop that low. The gold standard. Congratulations, Mr. President. We did it. We proved all the economists and the experts wrong. We have successfully got the U.S. back under the gold standard. We've already had reports of many banks dealing with long lines, exchange bills for gold and silver coins up to the daily limit, but they are managing to fulfill all requests made by the depositors. However, many Americans are not going to immediately exchange their bills for gold coins, but... There is a confidence among everybody that if they want to, they can. With the confidence of gold backing up the U.S. dollar, the measure we put in place to keep the prices stable and reasonable, we should soon be seeing inflation level off and businesses' profits increase. Well, maybe too early yet to determine the full effects. I'm confident that this accomplishment will bring new prosperity and growth to the U.S. for years to come. Well, we'll see what happens, especially with the oil crisis, but we should do relatively okay, even with the effects of that there gosh darn oil crisis. 5.4% annual GDP growth is not enough, especially during the oil crisis. Not enough. The right choice and the good f goods from just partners. Ever going to stop trade between the U.S. and those nations that still follow the despotic, brutal, and dying beliefs of Mussolini and that daddy Hitler? We must reward those nations that believe in freedom, democracy, and unfettered capitalism. Luckily for us, we already know a large number of such nations are allies in the organization of free nations. We'll encourage further economic ties between the U.S. and our friends in Canada, Australia, and all over the world, rewarding them with lower tariffs and reduced red tape to ship the products to us. Of course, we will strongly encourage them to uh, reciprocate, to make stuff made in America easier to send to them, but we'll take the first steps. The right choice. Marty stirred some creamer into his coffee before taking a sip and taking a bite from his donut. Mmm. Did you hear about the Shah of Iran? No. Did you hear about the president's speech last night? I have to say, I wasn't sure about Barry before, but now I'm totally on board. You do realize that by embargoing all fascist countries, even those little puppets, it could cause the economy to crash, right? Byrne replied, looking up from his newspaper. Some big-name business guys are saying that, like, right here. He pointed to a section of the tiny printed words. Heck, banning stuff from Mexico because it was Japanese steel could come back to bite us in the booty. Heck with them, Marty said, glancing at his friend with the narrowed eyes, not even bothering to read the offered article. So maybe some SS officer doesn't get to watch her propaganda BS on a new color TV. Or some rich Jap can't get a new dishwasher for his mistress. I think that's a small price to pay for having principles, like Goldwater said. Trading with the enemy of freedom only makes us accomplices in terror misery. Byrne gave a non-committal grunt before turning back to the paper. If so, how the heck will Goldwater get through Congress? Or get it through Congress. Public pressure. Letters to the editor. Overload the capital switchboards, that's out. Most of the politicians are only Washington to stuff their bank accounts anyways. Why would any, any, or why would they agree to such a thing, Vern replied. For all the president's words about cutting trade with the fascists, I don't think it's going to happen. So we just keep trading with murders and rapists because it'll make some fat cats even richer? Jesus. I thought you were a union man, Vern. Always looking out for the little guy. I am, Vern growled, but if we lose our jobs, then what? Sometimes you make stuff to sell to people you'd rather never shake hands with, like a German or a Negro, but we still make them anyway. Marty continued staring at Burns as he took another sip of his coffee, before shaking his head, setting a dollar bill on the table and standing up. Something, sometimes making the right choice is hard, and I'm going to do the right thing. 50%, God knows that we made the right choice. Does that improve anything here? No, it does not, but hey, we're setting ourselves up for the next one. Okay, so, oh wait, we can do this one immediately? A free market? Oh, baby boy. Oh, that's not bad, too. Um, the best defense is well-funded military. I will, I want to do this one. Like, I want to do these sides, this stuff here. And then, uh, if we can, if we get another, like, a second, uh, you know, win, another another four years, oh, we're going to destroy a lot of things here. But, that's alright. But, let's come down here first. The free market. The railways have been suffering since the interstate highways made traveling by car easier and faster, but they are still the vital arteries to move goods across the nation. Oil refiners are straining at their limit as the number of cars in the road skyrockets, which makes which makes gasoline way too expensive. These and many other businesses across the country need a bit of help. Even though Goldwater is a free market proponent, he has agreed to help set up a series of pri part private, part state owned businesses to help keep the economy going. They'll get loans and grants from the federal government to get started, but will act as private businesses otherwise, selling their products on the open free markets. This will go a long way to stimulate the economy of the U.S., the oil fan, and the world at large, the Iranian Civil War. Oh, boy. Um, I think I've read this one before. If you want to read this one, please go right ahead. Oh, no, 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 no. Hey, Ron, no. The Republican snicker. LBJ, every time I hear the president open his mouth to talk about free trade, it makes me want to vomit. Unknown, here, here. 
other members of agreement, LBJ says. Listening to him, you'd think that'd be as simple as slipping a whole switch in viola. And voila. The whole world's puppies and rainbows, and the Nazis and Japs will get on their knees and grovel, begging us to open trade with them again. How the F is, how naive he is, how naive is Goldwater? Uh, so here we are. The president's pushing for free trade, but it's not actually free trade. It's a gosh darn lie. He just re redefines it so it'll make him look good. Uh, sure, but it's popular. LBJ says, of course it is. No real American would actually want to trade with those dudes. Heck, I don't want to. Nobody here wants to, right? Murmurs of agreement. None of us here are yockeys. We barely do any anyway. But this gold water waste is politics. Nothing is going to change. It's a whole lot of hot air. So what are you going to do? What choice do we have? Vote against it, and the Republicans will be considered traitors. Vote in their favor, and Goldwater and the Dems get political points to and get to whip their dick around to push the rest of their right-wing agenda. Gosh darn, coalition politics are BS, aren't they? Transcript of a private meeting with LBJ and Republican congressman in 1971. Darn if you do, darn if you don't. Add RDD bonus popularity low. Huh. A rallying buffalo. Promises kept. Look at that. Oh, okay, so this is actually probably the thing that... Why did it take so long to fire? Because we did the, you know, the copyright strategy, I think. The colossal banner hangs over the stage at She is Buffalo. As the 4,000 attendees uh, applaud raucously. The seats are red velvet, the theater covered in gilt and lush artwork, but nobody is here for a Philharmonic or Turing app. They're here to see the president. Congressman Miller's addressing the rally and enunciating every word to make a speech sound both judicious and vital. The crowd claps gamely. Although everyone knows that William E. Miller isn't the star of the show. At home, President Goldwater stood up for the rights and liberties of all Americans. Applause. He has restored prosperity and built a future that all of our children may be proud of. Applause. And through these efforts, he has expanded American prestige abroad so that we may truly be known as the guardians of the free world. Still more applause. It is with honor and pleasure, then, that I give you your President of the United States, Barry M. Goldwater. Everyone leaps up, hooting and hollering as the President steps out onto the stage. It takes the better part of a minute for the ovation to stop. President Goldwater looks out at the thousands of Buffalonians, chanting his name. Many of them have left the MPP for good, seeing the Democrats as the right party for the conservatives of the North, businessmen, housewives, workers, salt of the earth, Americans all. This, he thinks, is a part of his future. It looks very pretty, Don Bratt. Who the heck needs Dixie anyways? <laughs> Uh, how many more days? We got seven days here. With okay, so let's get the focus done, and then we'll do Iran stuff or Iranian stuff. Yeah, so we're we're literally fully unified. The RDs are so that's awesome. All the way with Goldwater, yes, please. The conclusion of the battle for Russia. Huh. So sometime this morning, an urgent message has caught the attention of the president. When two states left in the former Soviet Union, the Russian People's Union in Western Russia and the Siberian uh, Republic in Siberia, the struggle for unification is almost finished. Both nations have declared war on each other not so long ago, and the winner is almost certainly will have to complete control of the former lands of Russia. An impromptu cabinet meeting was called today with several advisors to the president making their cases and discussing strategies on how best to support American interests in the war, of course. Much like the other conflicts or the other two reunification wars, the CIA is once again offering their help and reassures the president that no candidate will win without their explicit approval. After hours of discussion, the entire room eventually comes to a conclusion and concludes that we need better jet fighters. But honestly, these guys are going to win. I cannot think that the guys in the East are going to win. 180,000... 100... Jesus Christ. I'm going to vote. The People's Union, let them fight. We're going to support these guys. Sorry, Siberian guys, but... The Iranians have worn. Now, let's go and do this some more. And goods from Just Partners. Nice. Um, oh, here it is. So, we're going to read about that. Please go ahead. I do want to send some volunteers over. So, that'd be great if we get them in the OFN as well. I'd love to do that. Okay, send some volunteers. Oh. Nice. Yeah, cool. Engineers. Nice. Uh, and if you want to read about this one too, please go ahead. The Iranian aid bill. It's always good to even get stuff passed by Congress, right? Right? Sure. Alright, so, boys and girls, what can we send? And unfortunately, we're all out of copy. Huh. Afghanistan, westernizing nation. Well, we'll see how that ends up. Looks like your beard is just painted on Shia Mohammed Mahdi. But regardless, we can send a total of two whole fat divisions, and I'm going to send this, the 82nd, and the 101st. Just, uh, that's not bad. Invader, air assault, yeah, I'll use you, I guess, John. Looking good, looking good. Nice. And we're not going to cut down military spending anymore, because we'll be okay with that stuff. Um, where are our plans? We have 160, that sucks. Um... 
Late South Africa here. Oh, planes, where are you? Hello. I don't even know at this point, so. Um, if that's a hundred some, you guys can go here. And we're gonna grab some casts. There you go. There you go, nice. There you go. So we're not gonna cut down military spending, but we don't have that many soldiers, really, so. Yeah, that's not bad. We save like a billion, or we spend a billion more, whatever. Cool. Iranian aid, might as well. And what's after that one? Oh yeah, American aid inbound. That's not bad. I mean, we don't really need to get involved too bad. We can sell some of the liberals loans equivalent to ten million dollars. That's nothing. Uh, what is this one? Uh, our army professionalism, societal development will begin to slowly improve. Now that should affect us, right? Yeah, that should affect us. Actually, I've never gone down that way. But then again, we got some more stuff to deal with. So it's only fourteen days though. So if you want to read about American aid inbound, please go right ahead. Let's get some more army improvement. Why not? Because we can. But we got stuff going on here now, finally. Get more involved. Uh, you know you're a real American when your president sends volunteers to other nations across the world that you don't know where their uh, home country is. Iran? What's in Iran? Uh, what are they weak division counts? It might be like right here, maybe? Maybe? Anything over here? Uh, be charismatic. We want to get some more recovery rate. Oh, yeah, look at that. That looks pretty good. Oh, we could probably do really, really extremely well here if we're fast enough. Just go sorry. Sorry. Oh, I just overrun him. That's all. <coughs> just this morning, Congress passed the Indian-Iranian bill with an acceptable majority, giving us the power to send volunteers and military advisors to the National Front Forces until our equipment can reach the Persian coast. We've invested $100 million to keep the liberals fighting. Furthermore, this bill ensures that it lasts in cooperation with the Republic of Iran, and we're now committed to keeping the candle lit for as long as possible. Already, as the money flows into the newly established nation, the locals have been praising us for our swift efforts. We've also been getting positive reports from the population here, and it seems people are more than eager to combat oppression in Iran than in any other war in the past decade. We cannot fail the public now. Quite the lending hand to a faraway land. And the American military advisors. The Eagle Swords once again to the distant shores. Our advisor teams report the bulk of their teams have landed safely in Iran and request we coordinate with a legitimate, freedom loving Iranian government to ensure they have translators, staff, and vehicles available. Nice. Intensify volunteers. Uh, honestly, two, divi two divisions should be more than enough. Can we get some more PP yet? Just in case. No, we can't. Crap. Just don't get in a circle, guys. Um, you know what? Let's just wrap these guys up quickly. Yeah, guys are struggling a little bit. That's alright. It's alright. These guys are actually 20 combo with, right? Yeah, they are. That's pretty good, actually. Good. Oh, yeah, go right here first. Kill, kill the tanks, and then go here. Uh, have one of you guys hold for now. Do that. You got that one done. Nice. Uh, actually. Get a better one. Let's be quick about it. You'll be super fast about this stuff, so I'm not too worried about it. Alright, give him a few days, and uh, maybe don't attack there. Cool. You know what? Gold water's done so well, we have literally no debt. Cool. Anything else? Oh, yes, there we go. Nice. What else do we have here? Uh, Sun equipment uh, is okay. This one, uh, prom promise more soldiers. Eh, that's not really worth it. To, to free the oppressed, promise more American equipment. Eh, drone supply hub, new MICs, a beacon of hope. Eh, I don't really care. We're going to go back and do a free market. So, Actually, right now, we're improving by what? We're at 1.5, 142. So if we get this focus done, we should see if we get stuff actually accomplished here. Okay, you're actually losing there. That sucks. Oh, yeah, defend, 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 defend. They are somewhat cornered. Go in here. We can do some really devastating damage if we're fast enough. Oh, we're not fast enough. That sucks. Go in here, them. Hang out for now. We're going to attack you again once these divisions leave, so. And can you guys move up at all? Not re. What happened to my... Hello? What are you doing here? You ding-dongs? I told you to move, too. No wonder we're not winning the battles. Come on, just a little bit more force. There we go, nice. You go up here. Oh, they're overran, nice. And we'll do this one. 
A free market. Uh oh. Hey, if you want to be able to improve academic base, please go ahead. That's something to be celebrated. Get in there so we don't lose. Cut these guys all literally all off. So nice. See, we don't need that many divisions for this. Good. 20 combo with air helicopter divisions. Awesome. There you go. Pretty good. Three. Two. One. Let's go in. <coughs> Just gotta beat them up until they run out of tanks. Um, give them a little bit more time first. They're, they're spreading out too much, so. That's good. Give them just a little more time. Eh, back here. There we go. Look at our army XP. 46 is not bad. Just keep beating them. They can't replace the tanks. They have literally no way to replace tanks here for them, so. Give them some time. Another infantry division is not bad. There you go. Now you should be able to. Oh, they threw another one. Oh, we have another one. We can make the court extremely conservative if we really wanted to. A militarized economy, though. The Second World War showed us that we cannot allow ourselves to be caught flat-footed again. One of the biggest problems we had was our industry was in poor shape to rapidly switch to military production from consumer goods. Therefore, a series of semi-private military companies are being set up around the nation to serve as the new backbone of the military-industrial complex. Freedom ain't free, as much as we would like to say so. We must be prepared to fight for the freedoms of America, of the OFN, of all the freedom-loving people around the world. To do that, we will need the weapons of war. Hold up for now. You know what? Spend more. You can spend more. Won't we'll be totally fine if we spend just a little bit more. Yeah, a little, even a little bit more attack would be nice. Um, that's way too many divisions for us to attack. So let's move around. All right. So what do they have around here? Oh crap! Oh crap! That's so bad. Are you kidding me? Well, time to get out of here. Let's make it back so we can kill. It. Why does that happen, man? Seriously, you gotta force the attack. We gotta get out of here, boys. You better get out. This is crap. Why do they why does the coalition fall apart so fast, man? Oh crap. Go, 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 go. I swear to god, is this Oh they're bearing words, man. Whatever. Go, 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 go. Why are you taking so long? Actually you guys go right here. You'll be fine right there. Come on. Come on. Don't let him capitulate. Yet. Oh, we got him. We were random. That is dumb. That is incredibly stupid. Why does that alliance fall apart so fast? All right. Intensify the volunteers then. I didn't want to do it, but whatever. Why did you guys... Bros. You own this. Do you not? Yeah, we own this. Guys. Get your butts back over here. Oh, I see. You know, just... Just find him and kill them. Yeah, it requires nuclear weaponry. Another OFN power that has nuclear weaponry is good. Um, the cap is all... Oh my god, it's so high up. Well, the American economy. One of Goldwater's campaign slogans was... A-U-H-2-O, referring to the elements that made up his name. Now it can be said that he has come closer than any president of the U.S. to turn water into gold. America has now unquestionably the most powerful economy in the world, riding high on free trade, limited government, and American ingenuity. With this combination of ingredients, the U.S. is well poised for the future. Daring to dream. Nice. Just awesome. Uh, send only one of you guys that way. Come back over here just in case you can... Uh, you know what? As much as I want to go even more conservative, we're going to go with liberal option for this time. Seven and two, just I don't want us to lose any more support. So, also we got some other comments that didn't just yet, such as uh, I should play as Orenburg, maybe eventually. We'll see. I'm not opposed to that, but there's still some nations left I've not played yet, so, and I do want to play as sometime. So, uh, someone says, why don't I build more millies? I only build civvies. That's because millies, honestly, for American TNO, you don't need that many millies. You already start with more than enough. 34 is more than enough for what we really need, and civvies help us with our economy at the time of this recording. It's going to get changed later on, but. That's why I build civvies. Just, literally, it helps your economy. That's literally the only reason why. Um, and and we have the best president in TNO here we're playing as. Uh, Goldwater, as someone did say. So, yeah. Awesome. Oh, there goes those guys. Uh, are we fighting you? 
The PLC of Iran. No. Which is fine with us. So now I gotta deal with these hobos over here too. God, why? Why did you have to make this alliance fall apart, you ding dongs? I mean, don't get me wrong. We'll still be able to take these guys out. We will still do very well here. But, god dang it, you, you ding dongs. You just had to louse it up, didn't you? And there you go, killed them off. You can probably just go straight up there and kill them all off, though. So. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the army XP, but this late in the game, do we really need it? And they're gone too. American economy. Uh, I'm not sure. So, you know what? I'll leave this up to you. Should we do Rumsfeld plans, moderate policies, or should we do McNamara's vision? Let me know in the comments below which way we should go. Rumsfeld or McNamara's vision? Because he's a little bit more uncompromising. And the best defense is a well-funded military So, And then we will probably tomorrow, we'll probably start doing the American nature because we do our nature reforms. I'm feeling like... We're probably going to focus on the socialists in this one for this campaign. We'll see what happens. Maybe I'm wrong, but at the same time, we've got to talk about unions and dealing with them. Do we want equal scrutiny or do we want to exonerate the RDs? We'll probably exonerate the RDs. You know, deal with the problem at hand. Should dig them down deep. Blame the Republicans. Nationwide corruption is going down. Versus over, uh, kind of good at the same time. From blacklist to whitelist, cross-check senders to union affiliations. What about your Republican union members? Some unregistered gifts shouldn't bring it down, crashing down. Conservatives are honorable versus in the AFL-CIO. Attorney General's report, go, go with what we have. A limited case, the Constitution demands it versus it ain't enough. Self-made man, self-made evidence. Huh. The American Federation of Labor, um, Congress of Industrial Organizations versus and going down to the USA versus AFL-CIO. This is going to be kind of crazy to do, but let's at least begin with American nature. America's lush, fertile lands are blessed by God himself. From the thunderous roars of Niagara Falls waters to the Grand Canyon's towering ravines, not one inch of America's 3,000 mile length tracks or lacks. And the divine beauty envied by man and sung by its poets. For its forests, its waters, its hills and fields and mountains. Our nation's natural plenty is and should be an object of pride for those fortunate to call these their own. Yet men still seek to imperil America's pristine majesties with misdeeds to sate their own greed. Much of them in fact are companies with a gall to call themselves American. Americans. President Goldwater may be an ardent believer in free enterprise, but above all, he is a democratically elected steward of the Lord's most beautiful creation. No burden is too heavy, nor a cost too great, against their defense from the corrupting tendrils of mankind's pollution, which will begin tomorrow's episode probably with his nature reforms, which I kind of wish I would do this one, but we only had so much time, 310 days, which really sucks, but... Hey, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. We're suppressing the center MPP, and I'll see you tomorrow when we have finished off more and more of Iran so they can join the OFN. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.